This is KTN News. Interestingly, you grew up in Botswana until when you were like about 12, was it 12 years? Yes. 12 years. Um, your, your parents used to work there. My dad was working there. He okay. was a mining engineer with De Beers. Mm -hmm. so, How yeah. was it there? Uh, Can you remember very well? Because life. You're... I was a child, mm -hmm. so I don't remember that much. Mm -hmm. But it was a simple life. It was a town called Arapa on the shores of, uh, on the edge of uh, the Kalahari Desert. Mm -hmm. It started because that of the mine. That sounds so exotic. At the edge of the Kalahari Desert. Oh! Most of us just know about Kalahari Desert from, G, you know, GHC or oh, you geography. Go camping in the Kalahari on the weekend. <laughs> At the edge of the Kalahari Desert. Interesting. Yeah. Uh -huh. So my dad was working for De Beers because, um, and the town was owned by De Beers because they found diamonds and they set up the town around the diamond mine. Yeah. So it was such a small town where everybody knows everybody. Um, there were a lot of white South Africans, which uh, later in life I found out that my parents didn't enjoy our childhood as much as we did because oh. of discrimination, because okay. it was um, before um, independence in South Africa and all this stuff. As kids, we never felt that yes. uh, discrimination yes. because kids don't see color. Yeah, they don't. Um, no, that's not a life later in life, my mom talks about an incident and I'm like, oh, Actually, that was discrimination. Mm. I remember going into a shop in uh, in um, a place called Verinaging in, in South Africa because we'd holiday there a lot. And my mom was with my dad's workmate's wife, who's, who's white, mm -hmm. and she was told, um, tell your house girl's children to stop oh, wow. playing around the shop. Oh, wow. And we're like, okay, she's not So did you hear girl. that? Did you guys hear that? We what didn't. Did... We remember my mom saying, um, stop making noise and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. but. It's later that my mom explained that, oh, she was told. And then the Muzungu woman was furious. Mm -hmm. She was angry. <laughs> she, what do you mean? She what do you mean? Her. And she went home and yeah. she told her husband and yeah. my dad. And yeah. was this uproar. But we didn't really understand what it was about. Because mm. as kids, you don't, you don't see all that stuff. All and right. then we played a lot of sport. Mm -hmm. As kids, we played mm -hmm. a lot of sport. Mm -hmm. And your teammates were from every, um, every color, you know. I mean, we were runners, we played racket games, tennis, badminton, squash. Everything. Um, I never played football. You never played until football? Until high school. Until high school. And right. I was awful. <laughs> That's a secret. Such a contradiction. You were awful. Yeah, it's an open secret. Now. I like that. I'm on right You're honest. <laughs> <laughs> but I love so, football yeah. and I play with my mouth. But yeah. Yeah, you, love, you play with your mouth. So coming back okay. to Kenya, I understand that uh, you used to say, because you were learning to speak Swahili, and there's somewhere mm -hmm. I read... Ati used to say, Ati Funga Malango. Funga mal yes. Malango. Talk to me about that. I have Auntie Ida to thank for that. Uh -huh. Yeah. She told another family gathering mm -hmm. that uh, because when we came back and we went back to Kenya High School, my, sis my sister and I went to Kenya High School, and uh, Auntie Ida at the time was a teacher. She was a geography teacher at mm -hmm. Kenya High. But we, did, we couldn't get boarding, boarding places, so we stayed with her. Mm -hmm. So she was like a mom to yes, my sister yes. and I for. Yes, yes. This is. Ida Odinga. Ida Odinga, yeah, Mrs. Raila, yeah. Mm -hmm. So she um, she said our Kiswahili was pathetic, mm -hmm. and she told the family gathering that I used to say Fungua the Malango. The Malango. <laughs> and I'm like, Auntie Ida, you can't sell me like that. Yeah. Oh. But you used to say that, I'm sure. Because you were learning. It's okay. <laughs> it is okay. Please don't make me speak Swahili now. Wait. <laughs> No, no, we have to do it's this. It's better, but my accent is horrible. So okay, I don't... just say no, like, no, just say no. like, we've gotten two J's and we're going to have lunch. To me, if you got J's. A laffo. <laughs> uh, okay, we're going to eat lunch. <laughs> Radul, I hope I've driven properly. Oy. Out of ten, one out of ten. Come on now, come on. I would give you. I'd actually give you six and a half. I'd give you seven out of ten because you kept talking. Yeah, and I when still I was able to much, con concentrate on the road. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a multitasker. Women. We're women. Yeah, we're we women. can do this. All right, <laughs> let's have some lunch. I'm hungry. I'm hungry too. <laughs> wow. 
So, um, one of the things that you mentioned, um, you know, when we were driving here is the fact that you lost your two brothers. When he got cancer, he was very young. He was 14, I was 15. Um, I didn't really understand uh, cancer and how serious it was. And, you know, you just think, ah, oh, he has malaria, he'll get fine, you know. Um, I think he was diagnosed late. Um, he was in standard eight at the time. He was diagnosed late. He was treated for, first he was treated for a growth, then you're given an ointment, then you're given cough mixture because you're coughing, and then he got a, a, an asthma attack. Then he was uh, hospitalized, and that's when they found out he had cancer. And it lasted exactly seven months before he passed away. And it was, I think, the worst seven months of my life because you see somebody go from health to complete degeneration within seven months. He lost, he was already a thin person. He lost all that weight, lost his hair, you know, and you don't understand the disease when you're young. And um, it's unfortunate because if you do understand it, then you can handle it better. You also know what to do. Um, so later on in life, then my dad also got cancer about uh, 15 years ago. He passed away about four years, uh, five years ago, 2013. Um, but you learn, if you're informed, one, you can go for checkups on time. Uh, two, you know what you can do to your life to be a healthier person, eat fruits, you eat your vegetables, exercise. You know, you can know what steps to take. And you can also know when to escal escalate a problem. Because if you've had a stomachache for more than six months, trust me, um, you know, won't treat it anymore, you know. But we have that habit as Kenyans to one, self-medicate. Two, because there's a lack of doctors in this country, you find so many people being treated for malaria or typhoid or the symptoms, not the actual disease. So yes, I joined, I linked up with Edda's Hope and I've worked with uh, Kenya Cancer Association and different cancer societies um, to try and uh, bring awareness tell people that uh, early detection is the makes the difference. So go for checkups. Don't wait to be sick. We have a very bad habit in Kenya, and maybe it's the cost of healthcare. Yeah. Don't wait to be sick to see a doctor. Yeah. If go you know you have to go for a checkup six months or one right. year, go for the checkup. Go for the checkup. It makes the difference. Cancer in stage one and stage two, you're completely treatable. Right. You know, when it gets to stage three and stage four, it gets a bit complicated. complicated. But you'll only know right. because most cancers, you actually don't, um, you actually don't find it till you're at a late stage. Yes, yes. Because Were you close to, to both your brother and your father? I was 11 months older than my brother. Oh, okay. So okay. we were so really, were really like, tight. Almost like twins. For one month yeah. every year, he'd say we're age mates. And that 11 months didn't matter. <laughs> um, and because we were four kids, we did a lot of stuff as tutu, you know. Every game you play, your you're with your partner. You're with your partner, yeah. and we'd play either because I have a sister. So it'd be the girls against the boys, yeah. or the old ones against the young ones, right, right. or uh, it, there would always be a way to pair ourselves up. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so we're, we're, we're close as kids, completely. Close. Um, my, elder, my, elder, my, elder, my elder brother passed away. He was stabbed by thugs and then got complicated, went through his spleen and all that stuff. That was a bit more complicated. You must then, be a strong human being, because to go through all these things, you know, Especially losing uh, somebody who you are so close to. Uh, you should meet my mother. Oh, your mother is. <laughs> she is. Mom's are the she queen is strength. Of, yeah. She is strength. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I got through. I don't th think I would have got through any of this. Mm -hmm. You know, there's it's nothing not like a mother losing a, a, a teenage son. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And then my elder brother, he passed away when he was 30. So mm -hmm. there's nothing for a mother to lose her to lose two kids. sons yeah. and then her husband. Yeah. And then to top it off, the year my dad passed away, her dad passed away the same month. Oh, no. But she's yeah. such an amazing woman. And if I learn anything from her, it's strength, it's man. Strength. It's strength and then the value of family. Yeah. It's yeah. just, so yeah, I mean, uh, you do what you have to do to yeah. survive. I like that. I it like doesn't that. mean you, you don't hurt. Mm -hmm. And I think people mistake a lot of our smiling and you know they mm, see your posts on mm. people tell me on social media readily you're always smiling yeah I get it doesn't that. mean yeah. i'm always happy yeah, but yeah. you do what you have to do right. to get through life right. and i'm much better smiling than showing everyone hey i'm having such a miserable day but i have a miserable day yeah. it doesn't mean and i smile normal. when i'm miserable but yeah. don't don't bring down other people's moods. Yeah. You know, you don't have to bring you don't down have someone to be that If I'm not happy, I just don't take a selfie and post yeah, it. Yeah, I get it. And I get it. <laughs> I, maybe I do the same thing. What do you do um, if you're not in the studio doing your show? If you're not um, Monday to doing a Monday to uh, Friday um, working hours? Do you have any fun? Do you go hiking? Do you, what, what, what is the thing that we don't know about you? Of course, you play football okay. by mouth. <laughs> now, now, 
my only free day of the week is Sunday. Yeah. And because of the Jazz Study Initiative, you will find me in the stadium. Wow. Whether we have an activation or not. Really? If we have an activation, I'm up at, uh, the other day we had one at Kamtoyoyo. I was at Kamtoyoyo at 8 in the morning wow. and you were there until 7 in the evening. When we don't have an activation, I still go and just watch the game and enjoy myself because I can't be telling people Jazz Study and, and I'm watching you on TV, you yeah, know. That's yeah. hypocrisy. I get it. Hypocris yes. Hypocritical. Hypocr <laughs> I'm hungry. <laughs> Please bring the food. But yeah. I used to be big on hiking. I yeah. climbed Mount really? Kenya in 2007. Oh, I climbed Kilimanjaro yeah. to Point Uhuru mm -hmm. in 2009. Um, if I had the time, mm -hmm. I would do a lot more hiking. I love hiking. Oh, okay. I love hiking. Heaven knows with this belly of mine, I need to hike. <laughs> it's the World Cup trophy tour. Oh. How was that like for you? <sighs> I know. Do you know, the day I was called by, I think she's called Lorraine, the PR lady, and I was driving from Nakuru. I wasn't the one driving, someone else was driving. And I picked up my phone and she said, um, we'd like you to go to Ethiopia, bring the World Cup trophy to Kenya, be on the entourage, and da da da, da. And I'm like, oh, what are the dates, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that sounds like fun, da da, da. And then I put the phone down. And then I went, oh, the World <laughs> Cup trophy. Yeah. That has only been touched by a legend. Imagine that. Do you know, it was like, I started sweating. Yeah. I, but, but, no, no, but that's such a calm, um, phone call because you're like, oh yeah, so what are the dates? It doesn't hit you. It doesn't hit you there, but you're like, wait. The, I knew the World Cup trophy was coming. Yeah. I thought, oh, maybe it's a press conference. Maybe I haven't yes, heard it well. Yeah. And then I'm like, what do you mean? You want me to go? And then I come yeah. back in that Coca-Cola plane. Imagine that. With the trophy on board, Imagine, like we're yeah, pals, yeah. you know? <laughs> No, but it's such a legendary like work of art yeah. and what it means. Yeah. The World Cup symbolizes togetherness exactly, and yeah. the whole world comes together. You don't have to be a mad football fan yeah, to yeah. appreciate no, the World it. Cup. And, it's and, a and festival. It's, it's a fest and I'm looking forward to June. And um, you, I asked you during the, the tour who you were supporting and you said France. Yes. Is that just like the love for France and you know? Hey, the French. They taught me a lot of what I do right. and I appreciate because my first love was theatre and the French Embassy has a deep partnership with Kenyans and theatre. Yeah. I think they became like my, if I was to ever have a European country, it would be France. But I've never been to Paris. Well, and here you are. Hey. This this is an outcry to the French uh, embassy. Give me Kindly a visa. give her a visa to go to <laughs> Larry France. Sego works there now, <laughs> oh, really? so Larry, yeah. I want a visa. Yeah. <laughs> And your fans really, really love you so much. So how do you, of course, draw the line on social media right now? Social media is big, I think, for everybody who is in that space. Um, and it's very easy for somebody to be carried away by, you know, that love that you get from me, the hype from, that you get from your fans. I've been doing this a long time, so I know where to draw the line. I know when someone is flattering me and praising me, I have the best fans in the yeah. world. Yeah. Because no, I of have football. the best fans in the world. Ah, no, I do! <laughs> I have the because best friends of football, in the world. We have a natural conversation. Thank you. We have a natural conversation. Yeah. People meet me in the mall. They're like, "Eh, hey, do. Uh huh. Just send it. So I forget sometimes whether I actually know this person because they come to me like we're pals. Yeah. And I mean, they're, uh, they're always the bullies, and <laughs> you know that better than anybody yes, else. But yes, you know yes, where yes, to yes. block people. You have to block people. Um, Kills are the good. Kills are the bad. Stick the you good. know, when the, I've had marriage proposals. I've had people telling me I love you, and I'm like, you don't know me. You know, to you love me. You had marriage proposals on your inbox. On, on my inbox, and yeah, yeah but yeah, you yeah. you separate. Uh, those are just young guys having no, a good I know, time. I know, but you know, I know when to separate, separate yeah. um, the celebrity thing and what is real.